Let's talk about another issue or set of issues kind of bubbling along um, in both the House and the Senate and in the governor's office. It has to do with the deregulation of many parts of the health care delivery system uh, involving hospitals, doctors, nurses, um, for-profit hospitals on one side maybe, uh, not pro not-for-profits, uh, uh, government-run hospitals, safety net hospitals, the CON, certificate of need process, uh, all parts of the health care delivery system and the insurance system uh, being part of it. Um, and there, there are signs that there could be some substantial legislation in the 2016 session. Talk about it. This issue really came to the to fore in, during the 2015 session. The House leadership has made very clear that they want to uh, deregulate parts of the health care industry. They want to knock down some of the walls that have been in the, in the health care industry over the years. Uh, in fact, the House passed some of these bills during a special session in June, but it was more almost symbolic because the Senate never showed much interest in taking up the bills. But Governor Scott also is on board with a lot of this. He and the House leadership seem to be in, in uh, tandem on a lot of this. Um, it has started moving, particularly in the House. There's several bills out there, one of which you alluded to, which may be the highest profile, would be to eliminate the certificate of need process for hospitals. Uh, that, that process has been around for decades, I guess, uh, to, uh, and basically it requires hospitals to get state approval to build new hospitals, to expand hospitals, and to add certain programs. The House and Governor Scott want to do away with this. They basically argue if you uh, would deregulate this process, uh, that uh, you know, it could help lower costs, make care more uh, available. Uh, you've got other uh, folks in the hospital industry, particularly safety net hospitals, that are very worried about this. Uh, they say that, uh, uh, you know, for instance, these safety net hospitals are public hospitals, teaching hospitals. They say that, the, you know, they are caring for a lot of the indigent uh, patients in the state. And if you take away, drain away paying patients to go to new, shiny new hospitals, they're going to be left with uh, not a lot of uh, payments coming in and also the fact that they provide services like burn units, trauma centers, very high-end, uh, you know, costly services. So that's one issue that's out there. But there are a lot of other issues that are, that are percolating along, one of which would uh, uh, deals with um, uh, uh, um, what they call direct primary care, which is an issue that, uh, that uh, would essentially allow doctors to contract with patients directly, cut out the insurers for uh, routine care, you know, lab tests, uh, physicals, those sorts of things. And basically, uh, the, the House is pushing this, and it appears to have some movement in the Senate as well. Uh, there's um, uh, surgical centers. There's an issue about surgical centers, allowing them to uh, keep patients for more than uh, overnight, which is not allowed now. Uh, there's also an issue about something they're calling recovery care centers, which would be a new entity in Florida that would allow patients to stay for 72 hours after they have surgery. So there's all this movement going on. Another one that's an oldie but a goodie is uh, the allowing an advanced registered nurse practitioners to prescribe controlled substances. All these issues are coming out of the house, and they're trying to, again, sort of break down regulations that have been in place in most cases for decades or... You know, it's like you have all these territories <laughs> that have been built up by law and regulation as to what certain providers can do and others cannot do. And uh, this, these arguments I've been hearing, and I know you have, for 30, 40 years. And the House and the governor together are pushing to deregulate. What's the Senate going to do? Well, the Senate is the, the key to watch in this whole thing because uh, they have not shown a whole lot of in, uh, indication that they're too interested in this and a lot of this. They, again, uh, the direct, direct primary care, there seems to be some movement on that in the Senate. But a lot of these other issues they have not taken up in the past, during the past year uh, and moved very uh, far with. 
One of the issues I think that people talk about is that Senate President Andy Gardner works for a hospital, a large hospital system in Orlando. So uh, he's, uh, he's got an interest in this issue. Uh, but also there's some other key senators who have been fairly close to doctors over the years. So doctors are a player in this issue, so you gotta take that into consideration. Uh, and there's a whole lot of lobbying that goes on from all directions on these issues. So I think the Senate is the key to watch. There's also, which is sort of a side issue, but it may play into this too, is hospital funding issues. The governor has proposed some uh, things that would you know, hurt some hospitals from a funding perspective. And you know, will the Senate go along with those? If if or will he go along? Will they go along with the regulatory issues if he's holding out these funding cuts? So, you know, uh, there are uh, there's a lot of moving parts to it, but uh, also it's uh, it's something to really watch during the upcoming session. Sounds like a real health care range war. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. For more news about Florida politics and government, visit the advances section of our website.